United States waters. Point Wilson. First tonight, the nuclear deal between the United States and North Korea. It's drawn some criticism from congressional Republicans, and we'll take up that debate in a moment. The accord was signed today, and that's where our coverage begins, with a background report from correspondent Charles Krauss. Today's ceremony in Geneva put an end to 16 months of growing hostility and the immediate crisis over North Korea's nuclear intentions. After the signing, the U.S. negotiator, Ambassador Robert Gallucci, shook hands with his North Korean counterpart, Tang Sook Kyu. At the heart of today's agreement is North Korea's promise to freeze its existing nuclear program, including presumably its suspected effort to develop a nuclear bomb. The North Koreans have also promised to eventually ship out of the country some 8,000 spent fuel rods that could be used for making weapons. In return, the United States has agreed to form an international consortium to replace North Korea's current nuclear reactor with two light water nuclear power plants. The U.S. and its allies will also provide oil, sufficient to meet North Korea's energy needs until the new power plants are completed sometime within the next eight to ten years. International inspectors will also eventually be allowed to inspect two secret nuclear waste sites first discovered by the CIA. For nearly two years, the U.S. has been demanding that the sites be inspected to confirm suspicions that North Korea has produced a supply of weapons-grade plutonium. But under terms of the new agreement, these special inspections will not take place for at least four to five years. Hans Blitz head of the UN agency that's responsible for the inspections, says that while he believes the agreement is a step forward, he's also concerned about the delay. Until now, they have said never, never, never for these special inspections. And under the agreed framework with the U.S., at least they are saying that in a few years' time, this will be done. But clearly you are concerned that this delay could cause a problem. Yes, it is un unsatisfactory that there is a delay. Uh, I would like to think that the DPRK, in order to create more confidence about themselves, would spontaneously say that, all right, we, we can do it now, earlier than four or five years from now. But you have no sign yet that they may do that? No, and they have not committed themselves to anything else with, with the U.S. But today at his press conference, President Clinton said he satisfied the North Koreans will live up to their part of the agreement. Mr. President, a question on the North Korean nuclear arms accord. Even before the ink is dry on that accord, officials of the International Atomic Energy Association are complaining that it denies them of a key right, that of special inspection. Doesn't this set a bad precedent for other countries with nuclear ambitions such as Iran? I don't think it does deny them special inspections. It commits North Korea first to freeze and then to dismantle something they'd never committed to do before and something they weren't required to do under the NPT. It also commits them to ship out their spent nuclear fuel, to get it physically out of the country so they cannot do anything with it. The question of special inspections, whether and when, is put off from the present, and that bothers some people, but if you consider the fact that the waste sites are not going anywhere, that the IAEA is going to be in the country and that we have a commitment for a freeze and then a dismantling and that if they ever violate it, they won't get the benefits that they seek from it. It seems to me this is still a very good deal indeed. And I think that what we have to do is to work with the IAEA people who will be on the ground and work out the practical details of this. Now, two views from Congress. Congressman Gary Ackerman, a Democrat from New York, is chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Subcommittee on Asia and the Pacific and has visited North Korea. Senator John McCain, a Republican from Arizona, is a member of the Armed Services Committee. Senator, the president says this is a good deal for the uh, U.S. You don't think so, I gather. No, I don't think so. I think that the president has adopted the uh, uh, philosophy of uh, trust first, then verify. I was told by uh, the most high, one of the most high-ranking officials in the administration that they would at first insist on the inspection of the nuclear waste sites. That may now be as long as five years away. The 8,000 rods, contrary to what the president just said, does not have to be shipped out, at least not for three or four or five years. And the fact is, these same people 
have, pro have broken their word to us eight times since the administra this administration took office. And uh, very frankly, I think it's a bad deal. I think it's kicked the can down the road again, as President Carter's trip did, and I think we're going to live to regret this very, very much. And by the way, we're now giving uh, 500,000 tons of oil to a country that, uh, and, and all kinds of economic assistance to a country that is the most repressive, most repressive of any in the world, and this is a direct contradiction of the principles and philosophy of this nation, which, by the way, is what won the Cold War. We're going back to the days of President Carter, of appeasement. A bad deal, which we'll live to regret, Congressman? I don't think so. I think it's a very, very good deal, as long as it's followed through. Uh, the problem, of course, is we're dealing with a very unreliable negotiating partner, but indeed now they've taken a major first step and signed an agreement. They're going to freeze the program. We've never had that before. They've agreed to dismantle the program. They've agreed that eventually, as we take parallel steps, which will build confidence between the two sides, because they are a paranoid regime to begin with, that they will uh, ship the spent nuclear rods, 8,000 of them, out of country into, into a, uh, a third country. Uh, this is a major win for the administration. It is a major victory for uh, international security. And we've, at least for the time being, walked away from the precipice of a possible nuclear war in the region. Do you assume that the agreement to freeze their nuclear activity also affects the bomb or bombs they are supposed, for instance, by the CIA to have? Well, they they always deny the existence of that. We suspect that they're not quite telling uh, the truth. But indeed, if they were intent upon using a one or two uh, bomb type of a uh, strategy, that they would not have agreed to stop the, the, uh, the program that they have. Within the program that they, they have going right now, there exists the possibility that they could produce up to 100 nuclear bombs within the next decade. That has been stopped, been frozen at that point. How do you feel about the existence of the, uh, the supposed existence of the nuclear weapons they may already have made, uh, Senator? Well, I think Mr. Ackerman and the administration are saying it's okay. And not only are we saying that it's okay to Korea, but we'll be saying that it's okay to Iran and other countries who will demand a similar deal. You're saying I it's think not it, okay? Of course it's not okay. Uh, I think one nuclear weapon exploding on Seoul can do significant damage, and another one on a missile that lands someplace in Japan can do a lot more. The fact is they have violated the non-proliferation treaty egregiously time and time again and we are now rewarding them with billions and billions of dollars and I might add at a time when every regime is at its absolute weakest is when they're going through a transition in power we are we are rewarding them not at all we are taking uh, away four billion their billion ability dollars yeah. we are we are taking away their ability to continue in a nuclear program uh, to do away with whatever nuclear devices that they might have eventually. This is, this is almost swapping a guns for toys kind of a program. It will take Two time, nuclear weapons and they toys. may walk away from it. And we must be very, very careful. It's not a regime that I trust. It's not a regime that too many people trust. But at this point, we have, we have swapped a, a, uh, a time bomb for a timetable, which I think is a very positive thing. And there, there are those who would deny the administration which has a major foreign policy victory here, even the credit for being able to do that. Our, uh, Senator? Yeah, well, uh, of course, uh, Mr. Ackerman says he doesn't trust them. The fact is that this whole thing is based on trust because we're trusting them in three to five years uh, when the first nuclear reactor is built, which, by the way, also can have plutonium taken from it, although more difficulty, uh, that they will then ship the rods out of the country. They forget to mention the fine print there. They, he obviously ignores the fact that there are two, at least, nuclear weapons already in being somewhere. We're not allowed to inspect those sites. Uh, I'm sure that Neville Chamberlain made the same comments that Mr. Ackman does when he came back from Czechoslovakia, from Munich. You're, you, you're saying, by referring to Neville Chamberlain, you're charging uh, President Clinton with appeasing the North Koreans. I am, I am Is that what you mean to do? I am, I am absolutely accusing the President and, and Mr. Gallucci of appeasement and going back on their commitment that they made to me and several other members of Congress that the first item of business in negotiations with the Koreans would be uh, inspections of the two nuclear waste sites and the accounting for the plutonium that was diverted, you know, that could have, and in the, word, in the view of the CIA, did result in the construction of two nuclear weapons 
and all of this business is based on something that's going to happen. Uh, that our action is going to be now. We're going to give them 500,000 tons of oil. We're going to give them uh, two to four billion dollars worth of reactors. We're going to give them economic assistance. And what are they doing in return now? Nothing. Waiting three to five years. How do you respond to the I, appeasement I, charge? I, I, I think the, the, uh, the language is uh, a bit abusive, and I think that the political posturing is, is, is rather unfortunate. I think the administration has done a credible job. I don't see where the criticism was during the Reagan years and during the Bush years, while all this buildup took place and all this formulation was allowed to occur. This administration, for the first time, stepped in and said, enough. We are somehow going to come out with a way to stop what is going on and stop what has occurred. Of course one bomb is too many. Nobody likes the idea. But one bomb is a lot better than a hundred bombs. <laughs> and the eventual replacement and buying down of their graphite-moderated nuclear reactors and switching them for light water reactors, which are very difficult indeed, if at all possible, to convert to a nuclear weapons program, is the best deal that we can have. Sir, Senator, are you saying that, um, you and your colleagues, are you saying the administration, if it had been tougher in the negotiations, could have, could have and should have got a better deal? Absolutely. And, just and like, uh, with just what, like Mr. With Ackman what, is for... With what like leverage? Ackman, with what but, leverage but the, could the they have got leverage, a better deal? The same leverage that Dick Cheney used in 1991. We had a strong buildup there. We told them that they had better comply with the treaty that they signed, the Non-Proliferation Treaty, and they promised to comply with it. One of the many times that they have broken their word. But uh, for uh, Mr. Ackerman to say that the Bush administration didn't do anything, they did plenty and he knows better. Well, let me, let me say when, when, push, when push came to shove, uh, what the North Koreans did is they just announced, as, as was their legal right under, under the treaty, to withdraw from the treaty and to resign from it. If they would have dropped out of the treaty, and this agreement that they signed today puts them back into the treaty, there would be no hook and no leverage that we could ever exert on them. They'd be, they out, there like, they'd be out there like other states where we can't make demands because they're not parts of the treaty. Uh, states like India, Pakistan, Israel, South Korea, they're not part of this treaty deal. North Korea is back in the treaty and has agreed that they will not export nuclear weapons. Uh, we have some concerns with other things they, they export also. This brings them back for the first time into the civilized community, or at least they've expressed a willingness to get back in, and they have to pay a price. The price is the eventual full transparency of their program, the freezing of their nuclear weapons program right now, and the removal of the spent nuclear plutonium-laden rods from their country. Since we're in a political season, and uh, Senator McCain isn't the only Republican who's uh, criticized this treaty. Senator Dole has made similar criticisms. How, how do you answer what he's just said, that if they'd been tougher, if the administration had been tougher, it could have got a better deal? Well, that's, that's political rhetoric. Uh, you know, you can't, you can't prove a negative, first of all. Uh, secondly, you have to ask the people. But by who just live standing firm and doing kind of repeating the sort of military buildup that Secretary Cheney did during the Bush administration and saying, You've got to observe the treaty, or? Well, they finally said, we don't have to observe the treaty. You know, we, how far can you push them? Uh, you know, uh, uh, the senator was in favor of having a preemptive military strike at one point. I don't I know was if he not, still, I was if not he still that has that uh, position or not. Mr. Ackman but I, is not I, telling the truth well, again. Well, let, let, me, let him speak, it's and then I'll the come back. I'll come back to you. Yeah. The, there's just so far are you, that you can Are you push. saying that the only way to, to have forced the issue would have been to threaten military action? I, there's only two choices. Uh, you can try to negotiate a settlement, uh, the best settlement you can get. And in this particular case, the South Koreans, who have the most to lose, think it's a fairly good deal, but are, are cautious, as are we. The Japanese, who are very, very concerned in, in the region, uh, have hailed this as a, a good deal. Uh, it's not the best deal, the best deal you get when you negotiate with yourselves. Unfortunately, we're not. Unfortunately, we have a tough, repressive, communist regime uh, that's one of the most repressive uh, on the planet, and they've been hanging tough for four decades right now. They've not budged an inch. We have finally gotten them to say, okay, we're throwing in the towel. We will call it quits on this nuclear program. Uh, we would like to get back into the nuclear community. We would like to revive our economy just buy us out of the investment we made in this nuclear program. And the senator uh, keeps referring to we are going to pay for this deal and what it's going to cost us. This is not our price tag. The price is going to be paid by the South Koreans and the Japanese overwhelmingly. We have, we have no large financial 
commitment to this deal whatsoever. Aren't you, uh, are, are you saying, Senator, that it would have been better to uh, continue to use military, the threat of military force to insist on, uh, on absolute compliance with the agreement? Is that what you're saying? I would have said that we should go to the UN for sanctions, we should tell the Japanese to stop the remittances, and we should make it very clear that we would resist any military action very strongly on the part of North Korea and expect them to comply. If they didn't comply, only if they didn't comply, then I would say to prevent a terrible traumatic situation in the future with them being a nuclear capable nation with missiles in or capability to deliver them for long distances, yes, if necessary. Far better than going into Haiti with 20,000 troops. But the fact is that if we'd said to them, you can have your oil, you can have your light water reactors, you can have the trade and diplomatic concessions, but act now, not three to five years from now, not delay, then I wouldn't have been a, at all critical of this objective. The fact is that they have given away nothing until three to five, at a minimum of three to five years Just from now. Just time for a final comment from it's, Congressman Ackerman. It's okay to rattle sabers and you win if you're the only one with the sabers. We're not talking about Haiti. We're not talking about Panama. We're talking about a nuclear capable nation that clearly stated that if we blockaded and imposed a, a full-scale embargo upon them, that a state of war would exist between ourselves and themselves. This is not the kind of game that we should be playing if by virtue of sitting down and signing a treaty, we can save countless thousands of lives, 36,000 of Americans immediately on the line, then this is a better deal okay. than starting to throw bombs. Congressman, Senator, thanks both for joining us. Thank you. Jim?